June 29th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Chronicles chapters 26 and 27 from the Old Testament. The Divisions of the Gatekeepers From the Korahites, Meshelamiah, son of Korah, one of the sons of Asaph. Meshelamiah's sons, the firstborn, Zechariah, the second, Jediael, the third, Zebediah, the fourth, Jathniel, the fifth, Elam, the sixth, Jehohanan, and the seventh, Elihoine, Obed-Edom's sons, the firstborn, Shimeah, the second, Jehozabad, the third, Joah, the fourth, Sekar, the fifth, Nathanael, the sixth, Amiel, the seventh, Issachar, and the eighth, Peulathai. Indeed, God blessed Obed-Edom. His son Shemaiah also had sons who were leaders of their families, for they were highly respected. The sons of Shemaiah, Othnai, Raphael, Obed, and Elzabad. His relatives Elihu and Shemekiah were also respected. All these were the descendants of Obed-Edom. They and their sons and relatives were respected men, capable of doing their responsibilities. There were 62 of them related to Obed-Edom. Meshelamiah had sons and relatives who were respected, 18 in all. Hosa, one of the descendants of Mirai, had sons. The firstborn, Shimrai, he was not actually the firstborn, but his father gave him that status. The second, Hilkiah, the third, Tebaliah, and the fourth, Zechariah. All of Hosea's sons and relatives numbered 13. These divisions of the gatekeepers, corresponding to their leaders, had assigned responsibilities like their relatives as they served in the Lord's temple. They cast lots, both young and old, according to their families, to determine which gate they would be responsible for. The lot for the east gate went to Shelemiah. Then they cast lots for his son Zechariah, a wise advisor, and the lot for the north gate went to him. Obed-Edom was assigned the south gate, and his sons were assigned the storehouses. Shephim and Hosea were assigned to the west gate along with the Shalakath gate on the upper road. One guard was adjacent to another. Each day there were six Levites posted on the east, four on the north and four on the south. At the storehouses they were posted in pairs. At the court on the west there were four posted on the road and two at the court. These were the divisions of the gatekeepers who were descendants of Korah and Mirai. Their fellow Levites were in charge of the storehouses in God's temple, and the storehouses contained consecrated items. The descendants of Laden, who were descended from Gershon through Laden, and were leaders of the families of Laden the Gershonite, included Jehilai, and the sons of Jehilai, Zetham, and his brother Joel. They were in charge of the storehouses in the Lord's temple. As for the Amramites, Isharites, Hebronites and Azalites. Shabuel, son of Gershom, the son of Moses, was the supervisor of the storehouses. His relatives through Eliezer included Rehabiah, his son, Jeshea, his son, Joram, his son, Zikri, his son, and Shalomith, his son. Shalomith and his relatives were in charge of all the storehouses containing the consecrated items dedicated by King David, the family leaders who led units of a thousand and a hundred, and the army officers. They had dedicated some of the plunder taken in battles to be used for repairs on the Lord's temple. They were also in charge of everything dedicated by Samuel the prophet, Saul, son of Kish, Abner, son of Ner, and Joab, son of Zeruiah. 
Shilomith and his relatives were in charge of everything that had been dedicated. As for the Isharites, Kenaniah and his sons were given responsibilities outside the temple as officers and judges over Israel. As for the Hebronites, Hashabiah and his relatives, 1,700 respected men, were assigned responsibilities in Israel, west of the Jordan. They did the Lord's work in the king's service. As for the Hebronites, Jeriah was the leader of the Hebronites according to the genealogical records. In the 40th year of David's reign, they examined the records and discovered there were highly respected men in Jazer in Gilead. Jeriah had 2,700 relatives who were respected family leaders. King David placed them in charge of the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. They took care of all the matters pertaining to God and the king. What follows is a list of Israelite family leaders and commanders of units of a thousand and a hundred, as well as their officers who served the king in various matters. Each division was assigned to serve for one month during the year. Each consisted of 24,000 men. Jeshobiam, son of Zabdiel, was in charge of the first division, which was assigned the first month. His division consisted of 24,000 men. He was a descendant of Perez. He was in charge of all the army officers for the first month. Dodai the Hohite was in charge of the divisions assigned the second month. Mikloth was the next in rank. His division consisted of 24,000 men. The third army commander assigned the third month was Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, the priest. He was the leader of his division, which consisted of 24,000 men. Benaiah was the leader of the 30 warriors and his division. His son was Amizabad. The fourth, assigned the fourth month, was Asahel, brother of Joab. His son, Zebediah, succeeded him. His division consisted of 24,000 men. The fifth, assigned the fifth month, was the commander Shamhath, the Israelite. His division consisted of 24,000 men. The sixth, assigned the sixth month, was Ira, son of Ikesh, the Tekoite. His division consisted of 24,000 men. The seventh, assigned the seventh month, was Helez, the Pelonite, and Ephraimite. His division consisted of 24,000 men. The eighth, assigned the eighth month, was Sibikai, the Hushathite, a Zerahite. His division consisted of 24,000 men. The ninth, assigned the ninth month, was Abi Ezer, the Anathothite, a Benjaminite. His division consisted of 24,000 men. The tenth, assigned the tenth month, was Mehere, the Netophathite, a Zerahite. His division consisted of 24,000 men. The eleventh, assigned the eleventh month, was Benaiah, the Pyrethonite, an Ephraimite, his division consisted of 24,000 men. The twelfth, assigned the twelfth month, was Helde, the Netophathite, a descendant of Othniel. His division consisted of 24,000 men. The officers of the Israelite tribes. Eliezer, son of Zikri, was the leader of the Reubenites. Sephatiah, son of Maacah, led the Simeonites. Hashabiah, son of Kemuel, led the Levites. Zadok led the descendants of Aaron. Elihu, a brother of David, led Judah. Amri, son of Michael, led Issachar. Ishmael, son of Obadiah, led Zebulun. Jerimoth, son of Azrael, led Naphtali. Hoshea, son of Azaziah, led the Ephraimites. Joel, son of Pedadiah, led the half-tribe of Manasseh. Iddo, son of Zechariah, led the half-tribe of Manasseh in Gilead. Jaciel, son of Abner, led Benjamin. 
Azarel, son of Jeroham, led Dan. These were the commanders of the Israelite tribes. David did not count the males twenty years old and under, for the Lord had promised to make Israel as numerous as the stars in the sky. Joab, son of Zeruiah, started to count the men but did not finish. God was angry with Israel because of this, so the number was not recorded in the scroll called the Annals of King David. Asmaveth, son of Adiel, was in charge of the king's storehouses. Jonathan, son of Uzziah, was in charge of the storehouses in the field, in the cities, in the towns, and in the towers. Ezrai, son of Kelub, was in charge of the field workers who farmed the land. Shemaiah, the Ramathite, was in charge of the vineyards. Zabdi, the Shifmite, was in charge of the wine stored in the vineyards. Baal Hanan, the Gadirite, was in charge of the olive and sycamore trees in the lowlands. Joash was in charge of the storehouses of olive oil. Shitray, the Sharonite, was in charge of the cattle grazing in Sharon. Shaphat, son of Ablai, was in charge of the cattle in the valleys. Obil, the Ishmaelite, was in charge of the camels. Jediah, the Moronathite, was in charge of the donkeys. Jazes, the Hagrite, was in charge of the sheep. All these were the officials in charge of King David's property. Jonathan, David's uncle, was a wise advisor and scribe. Jehiel, son of Hakmoni, cared for the king's sons. Ahithophel was the king's advisor. Hushai, the archite, was the king's confidant. Ahithophel was succeeded by Jehoiada, son of Benaiah, and by Abiathar. Joab was the commanding general of the king's army. God, it's so fascinating reading King David's account of all of the people that were put in charge of protecting the temple and carrying out things within the temple and around the temple kind of reminds me of the amazing woman at our church who takes care of everything <laughs> all at the same time and makes it look fabulous. And there's a lot of work that went into glorifying, respecting, honoring the temple um, that was to come with his son. But one particular passage really caught my heart. It said, Hosea, one of the descendants of Mirai, had sons, the firstborn Shimrai. He was not actually the firstborn, but his father gave him that status. Now, I haven't looked up, I probably should, but I haven't looked up why he chose to give someone who wasn't his firstborn that status. Back then, we know that that was a super big deal um, to be born first son and have that honor of the, and the title of firstborn. We even see throughout the Bible arguments over that title and deception and uh, murder. So, so we don't know why Shimrai received that title over somebody who, who deserved it technically who was the firstborn but I thought it was so fascinating because it said but his father gave him that status and that's just like you God you give us the status that we have with you you get to say I'm taking you out of your place in line in the world and I'm making you a child of mine and you're going to spend eternity with me you know, John 15, 16 says that you choose us. We don't choose you. And so often I see people who have that backwards. They actually think they're in control of their salvation, um, that their uh, life that they're in charge of, that you have nothing to do with it, or you have a secondary role to that. But just like Hosa told Shimrai, I'm removing this from this person, from this other son I have, and I'm giving it to you. I am honoring you. I am loving you. I don't need to do this. There's no law requiring me to give you this title, to give you the honor of being my firstborn. But because I am your father, I'm going to give you that. Just like you gave us forgiveness of our sins through your son, Jesus Christ, we did absolutely nothing to deserve, to deserve that. In fact, quite the opposite. We did things that we very much don't deserve to be forgiven or receive grace or receive mercy from you 
definitely not the honor of spending eternity worshiping and glorifying you. And yet how this amazing love you have for us that we can't even begin to understand. You gave your only son for us. You had him die a horrid death on the cross. More importantly, taking on the sins of all of the sins in the past, currently and all the sins in the future for us. You gave us a status that we don't deserve. We definitely weren't born into that status. And there's nothing we can do to earn that status. It is simply by your grace and our faith in your son, Jesus Christ, that we are honored to be your firstborn, your children. Thank you for that love, God. I still don't understand it, but thank you for what I do understand. In your son's name I pray. Amen.